Welcome to another video. I know you've got two questions on your mind. The first question is, what in the world is Coomer's theorem? And the second one is, what is the question? I don't even know what the question is. How do I know how to answer it? Well, I will explain both of them to you. However, Coomer's theorem See, the thing generally about theorems is they make very complicated problems easy to solve. You don't have to go through the proof of it. You just use it as a tool to answer the question. So what is this question we're being asked to uh, find an answer to? Well, what it says is find the highest exponent of 2 that divides this number. What is this number? This is what in combinatorics you call 2026 combination 1000 or you say in how many ways can you choose 1000 objects out of 2026 now that you know what the question is let's talk about Kuma's theorem let's get into the video Now I wrote a simpler example so you can understand this theorem and how to use it. And once I explain this, you can go back here and answer the question. Okay, so the question we're asking is, what is the highest power of two? Remember the powers of two are one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. So we're saying which number, which is a power of two is the highest that can divide 13 combination five. Now, 13 combination five is just 13, choose five. Okay, we can compute this and then figure out the answer, or we can use Coomer's theorem. We know we're not gonna compute this because these are huge numbers and that's the advantage of Coomer's theorem. But here, we can actually compute 13 combination five. So 13, Combination 5 is written like this sometimes, or written this way. Um, it's going to be 13 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 13 minus 5 factorial. Let's write it again. This is 13 factorial over 5 factorial times 8 factorial. But we know that this is the same thing as 13 times 12 times, um, what do you call it? 13 times 12 times 11, 10 times nine times eight, okay? Factorial, right? Divided by times eight factorial. So eight factorial cancels eight factorial. So what we're left with will just be this, but we can, let's see if we can work this out. 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times nine divided by five factorial will be five times four times three times two. Okay, times one. Now, we know that five times two is 10, but I'm gonna leave the, oh, four times three takes out 12. Nice. And I know that five times two will take out 10. Ugh. Okay, so <laughs> this goes away. So what we have left is just 13 times 11 times nine. And looking at what we have, we know that the number is purely odd, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is gonna be 99 times 13, which is 100 times 13, that's 1,300 minus 13, that's 1,287. So we do 1,287 is this number. Now, remember what the original question was. What is the highest power of 2 that divides the number? What's the highest power of 2? This is not divisible by 2. 2 raised to power 0. The exponent on 2 has to be 0 because there is no 2 that divides this, which is equal to 1. That is the answer to this question. The highest power of 2 is 1. Remember, 0 is the exponent on 2. So I know that in recent times, on modern times, people confuse the word power with exponent. The exponent is that small number on top. The power is the answer you get. 
Okay, so one is a power of two. Zero is not a power of anything. It is just an exponent. Okay, so you say, some people say two raised to power zero. It should just be two raised to zero and the power is one. Just like four is a power of two. One is a power of two, but zero is not a power of anything. Okay, so now we've answered this question using just raw um, expansion using factorials going by the definition of this number. We cannot do that here because if you try to do this here, uh, you're not going to be able to do it because of the, the magnitude of the numbers that are involved. So, Coomer's theorem makes life a lot easier. I'm going to erase this method I used and show you what Coomer said. So Coomer said, if you ever have a situation where you're taking, you're choosing 1,000 out of 2026, let's say you have a V, you're trying to find the highest exponent that's going to be on a prime number in this kind of number, okay, N, K n combination k. We don't know what the number is, but we're going to call it m. What Coomer said you should do is take this number k and write it in base p. And also take the number n and write it in base p. Subtract this from this. The number of times you have to borrow to do the subtraction will be the value of m. Or, instead of using n and k, use k and n minus k. Okay? Then you add. The number of times you carry over is the value of m. Okay, just for illustration, we're going to take our n now as 13 and our k as 5. Okay, so according to the theorem, the exponent p to the m is the highest power of p that answers this question that divides this number and k. But how do you find m? m is the number of carries. Okay? You say, oh, you, if you add 7 to 6, you get 13, but you write 3 and carry 1. Yeah, that's it. Every time you carry, you count it, and the total will be your m here. So, number of carries in... We're going to have um, k written in base p plus n minus k also written in base p. So whenever you do this math in base p, the number of times you carry is the value of m. And that really simplifies everything for us because now we're going to use it here. So here, looking at this, our k is 5. So we're going to write 5 in base 2. What is 5 in base 2? Well, if you've never written a number in base 2, there are two ways you can do it. I like the elementary way where you don't need to know exponents. You just have to... Let me show you. You write 5 and you divide it by 2. You just say, 2 divides 5. How many times? 2 times. What's the remainder? 1. You go here again. You write 2. 2 divides 2. How many times? Once. What's the remainder? 0. So, once you get to a number here that is less than the base you're working in, you stop. So your answer is 1, 0, 1. So here, it is 1, 0, 1 in base 2. So, the other number you need to compute is n minus k, if you want to do addition. If you want to do subtraction, you can just do 13 in base 2. But I want to do the addition, so we can do carries, since I wrote carries. If you do 13, you'll be doing borrows. Okay, remember that. So here, we're going to say 13 minus 5 is 8. We're going to write 8 in base 2. Okay, now, you can either put 8 here and do what I showed you, or you can say 
how can I write eight as a power of two? Well, listen, this could have been written as four plus one. Remember, four and one are both powers of, five, of two. So four is two squared. Now, when you see two squared, because you're working in base two, you assume two is 10 in your decimal system. So what is 10 squared? 100. So two squared is 100. So this actually could have been four plus one which will be two squared plus um, two to the zero. So, but if you convert this to the decimal system, you'll be treating it as if these are tens. Well, what is 10 squared? 100. What is 10 to the zero? One. What is 100 plus one? You get 101, but now in base two, if you choose this way. Some people get this confused, but you never get confused with this. So the same thing, if you're changing eight to base two, all you have to say is eight must be two to the third, right? It's two to the third. You, since you're in base two, you assume this two is 10. What is 10 to the third? 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. So this has to be one, zero, 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 base two. Or you can come do what I showed you here. You can write eight, cha, cha. Two divides eight, how many times? Four, remainder zero. Two divides four, two times, remainder zero. Two divides two, one time, remainder zero. Since we've gotten a number that is less than two, you can just write this as 1,000. So what you have is correct. So now let's go use Kuma's theorem. So if we add both numbers together to get 13, so you could do this, remember I said you could act also do 13 and then you subtract five. When you're subtracting, you count the number of borrows. When you're adding, you count the number of carries. So we're doing carries here. So if I add zero to one, I get one. Because one is less than two, I leave it. Zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus one is one. One plus nothing, well, you can put zero here, is one. So you see my answer was obtained without carrying over anything. That means the number of carries equals zero, and that is the exponent on my two here. So two raised to power zero is the highest power of two that can divide this number. So we say, so with everything that I have shown now, we can easily go back and answer this question. This question is actually quite interesting because um, it has a very interesting result. So the first thing you want to find is your n minus k. So n minus k will be equal to, remember, you could do subtraction, but I like doing addition because the numbers are smaller. So n minus k will be 2026 minus 1000. That's 1000 and 26. Okay, so I need to write each of these numbers in base two. I write this in base two, write this in base two. Now you can use your method of converting or rewriting, but I like writing using this because this is fun and it brings back my childhood memories. This is two, two divides 1000, you get 500, remainder zero. Two divides 500 is 250, remainder zero. 2 divides 250, it's 125, remainder 0. 2 divides 125, it's going to be 62, remainder 1. 2 divides 62, it's 31, remainder 0. 2 divides 31, it's 15, remainder 1. 2 divides 15, it's 7, remainder 1. 2 divides 7, it's 3, remainder 1. 2 divides 3, it's 2, remainder 1. 2 divides 2, it is 1, remainder 0. <laughs> I hope I didn't make any mistake here. Yeah, that's it. So when you write this number here, we go to the other number, which is 1,026. 1,026, the same thing. We get 1,026. By the way, you could have broken down 1,000 into 512 plus, um, I think, 256 plus 64. You could have broken that down, then written all the zero, zero, zeros. I think that may have been faster. Um, for this one, an alternative way, instead of you going this long way, maybe I should show you. Um, 
we know that 1026 is 1024 plus plus um, 2 right 1024 is 2 to the 10 plus 2 to the 1 2 to the 10 is 10 to the 10 10 to the 10 is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 that's 1 gig plus 10 to it so what do we have Okay, I had to check my work. There's a disaster here. Two in three is one, not two. <laughs> so this is supposed to be one. I think this is where it ends. Two in three is one, remainder one. So my answer should be one, 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 one. Should be one. Yeah, so there's a problem here. It's one, 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 zero, one. Okay, so the advantage of using this method I just used is that Again, everything has its own advantage and disadvantage. Just choose which method you want. I have to confirm both of them, and I think this is right. This is right. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten digits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven digits. That makes it right. So now let's do the addition so we can know the number of times we do a carry. If we add zero to zero, we get zero. 1 to 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. There is no carryover. Do you know what this tells you? That you, by doing this tiny little calculation, you will figure out that this number is an odd number because there is no two, we didn't do any carrying. So the exponent, the number of carries is zero. Number of carries, m equals zero, which implies, is it 1000? Yes. So this number is an odd number. So the answer to this question is zero. Now imagine, if this was a multiple choice question and zero was one of the options, would you pick it? Leave a comment in the comment section. And um, I might do another, actually I was trying to solve another problem when I saw this one. So maybe when I do the next problem, I'm gonna to refer to this video. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.